This is BBC One, running ten minutes later than planned tonight, with another celebrity set to. Yes, this is Hot Potatoes, where the art of arguing is taken to a peculiar extreme. The British do have a talent for being bolshy, and it always seems to be men that are the easiest to anger. The problem is that men never grow up. Women do grow up to hate men. <laughs> But I have to say that actually I don't like putting men down. That's actually a job for a qualified vet, isn't it? <laughs> and you know a bloke's dead, don't you, when the machine stops beeping. PlayStation 2, that is. <laughs> I remember my mother gave me a good piece of advice about men. She said, give a bloke an inch and he'll call it six. <laughs> and what it comes down to in the end is that with most men, thinking is normally done with the penis, isn't it? <laughs> and that's why they can't keep it up for long. Um, over here in the cop end, it's the devil in disguise, Les Dennis, the girl with the golden gob, Gina Yashere, and the perfect package of brains, looks, and a willingness to get her round in, Gail Porter. <laughs> Gail's appeared on stage with Mr. Blobby, Otis the Aardvark, and the Chuckle Brothers. One critic said it was the finest ever RSC production of Othello. <laughs> Gail, you once said you'd never get married or have children. What made you change your mind? Um, I could think of something really witty, but I just found my soulmate. Aww. Aww. That's actually you, of course, and the lovely Dan Hipgrave from Top Loader. Do you know, I actually got out to do my speech and Dan's grandpa shouted out, Is she standing? <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks very much. And even had wee high heels on and everything. Aww. Aww. That's really lovely. Can I just say, say d don't trust Les. He's, <laughs> he's obsequious to the point of oil. And, um, he's actually an evil man. <laughs> Let's introduce the other side, because on the wrong side of the tracks, it's the wit, charm and mad staring eyes of Jeff Green, the perspicacity, eccentricity and silky skills of Rona Cameron, and Little Miss TV, Philippa Forrester. <laughs> Philippa's uh, actually a vegetarian and has an allergy to bread. We're filming in Scotland, so she hasn't eaten for three days. <laughs> I have to say, actually, it's unusual to have a woman on t TV who understands technology and science. Can you set the video? Well, yes, actually, yes. Can you? Yes. Oh, damn. I know. You were meant to go, no. <laughs> Instead, I'll But do I'm it. I'm blonde. Yeah, well, yes. I'm blonde and I can't set the video. Well, yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> Not only can she set the video, she can make it fight the toaster. <laughs> right, here we go. Big issues now and a big chance for our teams to work out what's best. Flares or leg warmers, Slade or Spandau Ballet, the Sweeney or Miami Vice. As we ask, thanks to this question from Gemma Mansfield from Stoke, what was more embarrassing, the 70s or the 80s? I'm a bit of a cruel old witch, really, me, so I've decided that... Gina can tell us why it was the 70s. 70s. Yes, but first, Rona, tell me why the 80s were the most embarrassing. I, uh, the 80s, as we all know, uh, you know, people were told that they never had it so good, but it was totally embarrassing. I have one word uh, to say to everybody about the 80s and the T-shirts we wore. Uh, that's relax. <laughs> uh, just big. Re How could you relax with that enormous, horrible lady dye flick hair still out your eyes all the time? It was like, like this, this big sort of comb. No, they were crap. Um, good music was replaced by drum machines. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sounding really serious, don't I? <laughs> good music was replaced by drum machines. <laughs> Susie Quattro was replaced by Tapao. <laughs> <laughs> Slade, weather. Slade was replaced by the G Goomba dance band. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I get a point?
point for good yep. <laughs> point dance fun. Absolutely, you no, do. No, I might get a point because I put the single. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one set? Point. Yeah. 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 I don't even know. It was so no. embarrassing. <laughs> Well, Gina, how, how do you react to that? The 70s were definitely the most embarrassing years, uh, for a start. Um, power cuts. <laughs> we used to have power cuts in Absolutely. the 70s. It made every TV programme a cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> the Green Cross Code man, you know, that, that was an embarrassment. The Green Cross Code, he was, he was rubbish. He was um, Darth Vader as well, wasn't he? Was the it? Green Cross Code man. He was, yeah. Yeah, but you forget about that and you just think Darth Vader. No, I have to say no, that I, like like Green Cross I, Code. I might lose no. the audience here, but I actually say that Star Wars was the worst film of the 70s. <laughs> no? <gasps> My God! I, I have to say that He I... is the Antichrist! <laughs> <laughs> What was it about? I mean, it's just beaten The Godfather to the best film. Well, ever. Right. Because it was the best no, film, but we're not even going to go down that something. road. <laughs> because I'm not going to argue with you, you're my team. <laughs> just agree with me, right? The 80s when I, as a child, Joe, in the 80s, running to school in me raw raw skirt, <laughs> and me snood, and... <laughs> what? Me, me snood and me dealy boppers flailing in the wind. <laughs> I used to go on the town looking like I was about to crush a Jacobean rebellion. <laughs> no, With bad hair. The 70s were worse. We had, in the 70s, paraffin heaters, for God's sake. What could heat up a house better than a paraffin heater that'd be knocked over? <laughs> what about <clears throat> chopper bikes? <clears throat> great, great chopper bikes. You could get the family on that seat. <laughs> Rubbish. They had one wheel bigger than the other, you couldn't do wheelies. And where's it? What, what, what's with the gear so thing there? It was rubbish. A sofa for a seat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. we, we actually thought that Soda Stream tasted nice. <laughs> <laughs> one word which will just validate our argument about what? the 70s Kaplunk. <laughs> <laughs> What about it? It's a great oh, game. Oh, get out of the best it. game Come ever from. invented. <laughs> the other thing with the 70s, yes. the joy of sex. <laughs> that came out. That is yeah. embarrassing. Have your mum read that to you at bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are going to read the joys of sex. <laughs> you put one leg over your ear. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to that. My mum's Welsh. So. <laughs> Kipper ties were awful, weren't they? Do you remember kipper ties? Noddy Holder went into a fashion shop and the bloke said, Do you want a kipper tie? He said, Yeah, two sugars, please. <laughs> hey, 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 I was hey. doing that joke in 1970. <laughs> You've heard the arguments, audience. And let, let's have a vote from you. Let's have an instant decision, audience. Vote now. say the 70s were more embarrassing than the 80s and it also means that Les, Gina and Gail get two points. <laughs> in the 70s we had the Wombles, those irritating prats in suits. We had the same thing in the 80s but they were called yuppies. <laughs> Gail, you played a big part in our growing up. Did you actually like doing kids TV? Was it fun? Yeah, it was actually. It's a good laugh. Friendly? Better <laughs> yeah. than adult TV or...? Um, no. Well, oh, it's right. just, uh, different. 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 You ever yeah. done kids TV? No, they won't let me. <laughs> I, I can't really work out why. <laughs> it's time for Jeff and Les to go head to head. It's like Predator versus Terminator. <laughs> As they're put on the spot with arguments written by the audience, they'll get points for the funniest answers and whoever has the last word. Positions, gentlemen, please. <laughs> Les, I want you to start the... Okay, um, Leslie. The country should be run by game show hosts because... <laughs> Um, the country should be run by game show hosts because we would have King Brucey who would say, nice to rule you, to rule you nice. <laughs> and you get nothing for a Blair, not in this game. <laughs> the country should be run by game show hosts because as politicians they know all about opening envelopes and asking questions for money. <laughs> The country should be run by game show hosts because at least there would be a chance of Anne Robinson being assassinated. <laughs> the country
country should be run by game show hosts because if we went to war and lost, they'd be able to say, let's see what you would have won. <laughs> should be run by game show hosts because uh, Jim Bowen could be Chancellor of the Exchequer and say, well, now your charity money's safe. <laughs> do you want to go for the tax cuts or the caravan? <laughs> That'll do. Well done, mate. Nice one. All right, Les, I'll give you a point. It <laughs> goes against my nature there. Okay. So Thank you. That, that means, Jeff, you've got to start off the next one. Okay. You may do. Hadrian's Wall should be rebuilt because... <laughs> <laughs> it's down. <laughs> Hadrian's wall should be rebuilt because <laughs> because it would keep all the students away from the Edinburgh Festival. Hadrian's wall should be rebuilt so the Queen could open it, Charles could moan about it, and Edward could be thrown off it. <laughs> Hadrian's Wall should be rebuilt because it would keep the English out of Scotland. Yeah. Not play to the home crowd of, at all, of course. Hadrian's Wall should be rebuilt because it would keep the crankies out of England. <laughs> I give the point to Jeff. <laughs> oh, thank you, Joe. And, and I think, um, mm -hmm -hmm. Geoffrey, you start, will you, with caravans are fun. <laughs> Caravans are fun, because when you run out of booze, you can sniff the chemical toilet. <laughs> Caravans are fun because if you lose your front door key, you can use a tin opener to get in. There's a point. Thank you. you Thank you. Well done, boys. A sterling performance. Two bob, in fact. I'll give <laughs> Jeff one point and Les two points. Thank you. <laughs> Rona, have you ever caravaned for pleasure? Um, yes, I was brought up on, on caravanning holidays. It was, uh, it was a lovely, uh, lovely way to live. Of course, I was an only child and there was absolutely nothing to do but play swing ball for four weeks <laughs> <laughs> on my own. Uh, but no, I recommend the, uh, I recommend the, the caravan. But uh, we upgraded, you see. First of all, we had a Sprite, then we got an Astro Ranger. And the Astro Ranger is better than the motorbike. But gustily winds, you have to be careful because <laughs> it travels at a low speed. Whereas the Sprite is only a four berth, you see, it's rather lighting on the, on the undercarriage. And it's much better. <laughs> Sorry, am I boring you? <laughs> Right, here we go, getting to grips with a common gripe. In a letter from Kate Ann Joseph of Hales Own, she says she's really fed up with the attitude she gets from surly shop assistants, from ticket collectors and from waiters. In fact, nearly everyone she meets. So, have the British lost their manners? GF, I think we'll get you to argue that we have lost our good manners. And first, I want Les to completely step out of character <laughs> and tell me why Britain is still the bastion of good behaviour. Well, we are we are well mannered, yes. I think, in Britain. Absolutely. In fact, can I, <laughs> see, Robert, see what I mean? Get off. I, mean I, I would have. I was just going to say, would you like to go first, Jeff? But he just he just came straight in. We are we are very well mannered. And may I say, Joe, you look very lovely tonight. <laughs> you liar. <laughs> Oh, I see. Oh, that's all it is, good manners. That's what it is, I'm showing but secretly you you're thinking no, she no, looks no. like a cathedral with clothes <laughs> on, not you? I believe it, Joe. I believe it. And I will now very politely hand over to Jeff. Um, we have lost our manners. I think we have lost our manners in this country, Joe. Um, I live in London, right? I, when I first went to London, I was a very happy person. You know, I'd smile at people on the tube. They'd run off. Um, you know, and I, and I feel the blackness has crept into me. Oh, we haven't got time for people. There was a pigeon walking towards me the other day, and it had a limp. You know what? Some of them have got a limp, and he was looking for food. And I, all I could think was, he's putting that on. <laughs> and it's just we've got no manners. The, um, the other day, um, a little old lady dropped a dinner at the services, and I was the only one clapping. <laughs> Break wind. Did you notice I said break wind because I'm well mannered? When we break wind, we say, you know, we say, I'm sorry about that, rather than cop this. 
Oh, sorry, what Lewis said is absolute rubbish. Yeah. Most British men, when they fart, pull the duvet over your head and do say cock. <laughs> no, 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 When a man farts, right, you've got to take that as a compliment. That means you've cooked him a good dinner. <laughs> I think we've got no manners now, and I think it's because there's a lack of hat wearing in society. <laughs> because the hat was a symbol for uh, the expression of manners. You see, perhaps if you saw a funeral cortege going by, you'd. <laughs> <laughs> in my day, you'd, you'd tip your hat. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> 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 That people used to tip their hats, and what about that, that lovely old fashioned thing that my father still used to speak of when I was younger? And that was how the, the gentleman used to walk on the, on the outside you know, of the pavement to protect the lady from it. Well, actually, now they just do that to get away from the big issue vendor, <laughs> which is I still rude do that. in itself. I still do that with a woman, I still do that. We did that today, I walked on the outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I saw you from the shops. <laughs> yeah, pushing a woman into we... the traffic the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you pushing. Well, you thing. used to work in B&Q, didn't you? Who yeah. was ruder, the customers or the staff? I was always extremely polite. Thank you. <laughs> but B&Q. <laughs> I had, I, I said, no, we were polite. You can maybe work there, not be that happy. And you I had a badge saying, B&Q, Gail, happy to help. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even the badges were polite. Which B&Q did you work in? I worked Could... in the B&Q Milton Road in Edinburgh. Milton Road? I had a paper job there on Saturday. <coughs> did you? You yeah. probably delivered my paper, because I was yeah. just down from God, there. That's so weird, because you you're work just from Joppa, along yeah. the road from Musselburgh. Yeah. And welcome to Reminiscences <laughs> About Scotland. <laughs> the reason I ask, the reason I ask is, I, th they have old people in B&Q now. Really? Uh. One bloke serving you. <laughs> serving no. you. No. One bloke served me, his belt was there. <laughs> Him about 105. <laughs> all this, all this was trouser. <laughs> Joe, I hate that. I hate that thing when you're sitting. Someone's mentioning traffic. You're sitting in the car and you do that nice thing. And I'm sorry, but it's things like this that destroy, <laughs> destroy the soul in humanity. And it could be such a simple little thing you could all do. You let someone in from an opening. And you're in the car. You let them in, and they don't wave. No. They don't wait. I have followed. on this I've followed someone home before <laughs> and I've got out my car and I've said what do you if only you'd wait even just a just a gesture just a finger above the whip even just an eyebrow if only and only then will I let the ambulance go on its way <laughs> you have heard the arguments and our audience will provide an instant decision vote now Our audience believes that Britain has lost its good manners. That's two points for Jeff, Rona and Philippa.